Hey guys, what's going on? Sherman here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Sog Knives Snarl. The Snarl is Sog Knives production version of custom knife maker Jason Browse's Silent Soldier neck knife. Now, I have actually gotten the pleasure to hold and fondle the Silent Soldier, but I've never owned one. So what's cool about the Snarl is that it allows average guys such as myself to have a custom knife design at a very reasonable price and make you know readily available. Um, my problem with the Silent Soldier, the, the actual custom knife, is that whenever I had the money, uh, they were never available. It just kind of, you know, turn of events. Um, not positive, but I don't think Jason is currently making the Silent Soldier anymore. Now, don't quote me on that. When I was at Blade back in June, he said he didn't bring any. So I don't know if that's because he doesn't currently, you know, make them. Maybe he's just making them in much smaller batches. I'm not 100% sure. But like I said, this makes it much more available to the general public. Like I said, at a very reasonable price. But this is a really sweet knife. This was sent to me by, by Knife Hog to test and to review. And I've been carrying it for a couple of months now, every single day. I carry this at work and uh, just around the house, you know, going to, to the store. Uh, this, is, this is on me. And it has just been a fantastic small EDC blade. You guys know that I love my EDC fixed blades, so this is no exception. This is actually one of my absolute favorites. Uh, so anyway, I'm just going to get into the technical specs real quick. The overall length on this knife is 4.3 inches. Very small. That's going to get past a lot of a lot of local knife laws, uh, especially the the actual blade length. Uh, and I know some countries you're not even allowed to have a fixed blade. So, but the actual blade length, measuring from tip to ricasso. I believe that's how they do it, is 2.3 inches. So like I said, a pretty small knife, but it is uh, plenty of knife, trust me. Uh, the weight on this guy is 3.5 ounces with the sheet. So a very lightweight package. Uh, like I said, I carry this every day. I don't even notice the weight. So very lightweight. And I'm not much of a you know a weight guy anyway. You know, if it's if it's useful, if it's useful to me, I'm gonna carry it if it's you know 10 ounces or two ounces that matter to me uh, the blade steel on this is this is of course one solid piece of 9 CR 18 MOV if you guys are familiar with 8 CR 13 MOV with a lot of your budget Kershaw knives and even SOG knives uh, spider codes and so on uh, this is going to be somewhat of a steel upgrade it is a lot harder than 8 CR 13 MOV and I have you know, reprofiled this edge, I'll go over that in a second. And it did take me a while, so it is indeed harder, and it's held its edge very well from day in and day out cutting tasks. Now, SOG, on the SOG website, they list the Rockwell hardness to be 58 to 60. Now, I, that's like D2 tool steel hardness. Um, I'm guessing around the 58 rather than 60 range, which those two points do make a big difference. but. Like I said, it is a little bit harder, has a little bit better edge retention in my experience than 8CR13. Um, and it is a stainless steel. I have not had any kind of rust spotting on this yet, and I've been carrying it every day uh, pretty much against my body in humid environments, and I'm sweating all day, so, <laughs> so it, it has done a good job at rust resistance. A uh, beautiful satin finish on this guy. They only offer it in satin finish at the moment. I'd like to see them come out with some coated versions. But I really like the satin finish on this. It just looks really good. Of course, Jason, his customs, he offers, you know, stone wash, sand blast, bead blast, coated versions. Uh, Warren Cliff style blade. So it's just the straight edge, which is what I prefer for a utility knife. Very effective, very sharp tip on this thing. Uh, now, like I said, I did reprofile the edge. It did not come like this. But the edge right from the factory was hair shaving sharp. So there was nothing wrong with the edge per se. It was just a lot steeper. Now, like I said, it was hair shaving sharp. And a steeper edge, uh, i.e. thicker behind that cutting bevel, is going to be better for utility tasks because it's not going to be as prone to chipping. It's going to be a lot more durable. I didn't really need it to be that durable. Now, that, you know, I'm just picky about my edge. So I thinned it out a little bit back that edge up a little bit. Up top you have some jimping, very functional jimping I might add. Um, it is just aggressive enough, not painful. Uh, my only problem with it is that to me it's in the wrong place. When you're when you're holding this knife, the 
I mean, I think the most universal, pra most practical grip you're going to have this knife in is going to be this. Your index finger in the first hole here and your middle finger here in this cutout. Uh, that's the most universal or, or the most effective grip, I believe. Now when I grip it, my thumb is wanting to rest closer towards the tip on the spine where there is no jimping. So that's not an issue because with the control like this and with a grip like this, jimping to me is not even necessary. It's nice, but you don't even really get to use the jimping unless you're, ch you're, you're pulling back, you know, choking back on the knife, which, you know, I've done before in cutting. It's not, you know, really any advantage or disadvantage. So for that uh, jimping to really be effective, it should have been a little bit for, uh, further towards the tip. But not a big issue whatsoever. But you do have jimping, done a little bit differently than Jason does it. And then you have these two little cutouts right here. Of course, midway through the spine. Um, cosmetically, it looks pretty cool. I think what it's supposed to, to be is um, a pinching point for like a pinch grip. I've never used it like this. I don't think it's that necessary, but you can use it if you'd like. It, it is there. And aesthetically, it is, you know, kind of pleasing. So in the handle, you do have, which is, you know, the characteristic of this knife, what makes it so um, versatile and what makes it stand out is the two huge holes milled out of it, which does decrease the weight substantially, which is why this, this knife only weighs 2.2 .2 ounces by itself. Um, the holes do have the, this nice chamfering all around it, I mean, the beveling all around it so that you don't have any sharp edges when you're putting your fingers through. Now, my index finger is about a size 10, so I give you guys a good idea of how big that hole is. Now, if you have real big meat hooks for fingers, you know, you wear a size 12 or 13 ring, uh, you might have a little bit of difficulty putting your finger all the way through. You may be just be able to get the tip, but you still get a ton of control that way. But anyway, you have those two big holes. You have kind of a little triangle cut out there just for aesthetics. And then you have this little cutout right here for primarily your middle finger. So this gives you a ton of different grip options. But I'm just going to show you guys what I think to be the most practical. Now obviously the one I just showed you, index finger through the first hole, middle finger resting in that little cutout, and then just the rest of the fingers, and then thumb resting in the spine. You get excellent control with this grip. Just hit the camera. <laughs> excellent control with this grip. The knife obviously is not going to fall out of your hand. So it's one of those designs where uh, you can cut, do some things with your fingers. All your fingers are freed up and go back to cutting without even letting go of your knife. So that's pretty sweet. In a defensive roll, obviously this is going to be a huge advantage. Small knife, easy to control, not going to fall out of your grip. You can even put your middle finger, your middle finger through that hole and have kind of a more of a punch dagger. Um, but of course you can just do that with the index finger as well. Another way that you can hold this is you can just put your index finger in that little cutout, kind of choke back on it. If you want a little extra reach, uh, of course, I just feel more comfortable putting my index finger there. Um, another way that I found to grip it is you can put your index finger through the first hole and your middle finger through that second and grip it like so. Uh, I've done this before when I'm trying to scrape something. Uh, reverse grip? Uh, not really. You can put your pinky through there. It's not really beneficial. You don't get a good enough of a grip. It'd be too easy for that knife to come forward and cut your fingers wide open and do more damage than good. Uh, but you can do that. Or you can put them all the way through there. Almost kind of mimics brass knuckles. Not a very good grip, though, in my opinion. But th those are some different grip options for you guys. Of course, you can come up with your own. Those are just the ones that I use. Primarily just this grip. Sometimes I'll put my middle finger through that first hole and then rest my, my index finger towards the tip to get maximum tip control if I'm doing real fine, intricate cutting. Or kind of do a little pinch grip towards the tip. Um... But the just the main thing, or one of the main things I love about this knife is you're just an excellent, you have an excellent amount of control, tip control. You know, you're putting your finger through that hole, resting your thumb towards the tip. I mean, it's just maximum tip control. And it has such a needle-like pointy tip that it's just perfect, especially since the edge is so sharp. I can do really, really fine, intricate cuts with this blade and not lose any tip control. So that is a huge huge advantage you have with this design over other smaller fixed blades. So, and obviously you just get a smaller package with this knife because you don't have to worry about this being the handle. You only have a little bit of the knife to grip. Um, put, by putting your finger through that hole, like I said, you have an excellent amount of control and you're not going to, uh, this knife's not going to get away from you. So you're allowed to have a smaller package but not lose any kind of blade length, not lose cutting power. 
Uh, the, the thickness on this steel is quarter inch, so it's a pretty big, beefy slab of steel, which is good because it's thicker in your hand. It's, uh, has, it's for better ergonomics, which the ergonomics are very, very comfortable on this knife. It is a lot more so than you probably think, which is what I was worried about when, uh, when I first received it or when I was first looking at this knife as I was afraid to be uncomfortable, but it's not whatsoever. It's extremely comfortable. The only modification that I've had to do with this knife, I mean, like I said, I, I did reprofile the edge. That was not a necessary modification. That was just one because I'm picky. But the, uh, the edge right here near where the Ricasso is was rather sharp. It wasn't finished and beveled like this side is right here. Um, pardon me, my fingernails are still dirty from work. <laughs> I tried to squeeze in this review, you know, when I could. But anyway, I just sanded it and then polished it with my Dremel. Just rounded off those edges because when I was gripping it, my middle finger was hitting it and it was uh, not cutting my finger, but it was very uncomfortable. So that was the only modification I've really had to do with this knife. And I'm not sure if that's all models, but it's just, you know, something you might have to do if you get this knife and yours is like that. I'll show you guys the sheath that it comes with. It is just an injection molded nylon sheath, not Kydex, but it's not a bad sheath. It is a, it is a good sheath for what it is, and it's very lightweight, pretty minimalistic. It is a little bit smaller than Jason's sheaths that comes with his Silent Soldier, I believe. So that's pretty cool, a little improvement over the custom. Comes with a, a steel spring clip for your belt. Now, my only gripe is that it does not actually, it comes pretty far away from the sheath itself. So, you really need a thicker belt to carry this. Um, it's a little bit loose if you just try to slip it in the waistband. So a lot of times I'll put it on my belt and my waistband. But it gets the job done. You may have to bend it if yours is like that. I may do this. With, I may do that with this one. Just kind of bend it into place. It is removable, of course, and reversible. I'm not sure if you can mount it in any of the other lashing points there. Configure it and orient it in a different position. I haven't tried because uh, I like it the way it is. But like I said, it is removable. So you can carry it on your belt, take it off, slip this in your pocket, or it also comes with a steel bead, uh, steel bead chain, and you can wear this around your neck as a neck knife. Now, the only thing that keeps me from wearing it as a neck knife is um, this is a friction fit sheath. It does not have any kind of positive locking or any kind of positive click necessarily, like a Kydex sheath would. Uh, so it's just really just held in there by friction. Uh, now, that's not an issue. It doesn't rattle whatsoever. I've never had this fall out, and it's not going to fall out. Um, you know, I've been carrying this on my belt every day every day to work, and, you know, I lift up my shirt, my snurt, my snurt, my shirt snags it, and it's never come out of the sheath. Uh, I've had boxes hit it, and it's uh, it's pulled the, the sheath away from my belt a little bit, but it's never knocked the blade out of the sheath. But... Since there is no positive click, it just makes me a little leery about uh, carrying this as a neck knife. But it will probably be just fine if you guys choose to carry it like that. Um, also, it's just inconvenient for me to wear a neck knife at work. So I haven't really had a whole lot of experience carrying it around the neck. But the sheath does not uh, keep you from pulling the knife out. It is very easy to extract the blade. Just put your finger in there. You have a little bit of a push-off point and just easily extract that blade to get it on the ready. So yeah guys, really really sweet knife. I've really enjoyed carrying this and it has been a a great addition to my small fixed blade collection. It's just been an excellent EDC knife. So if you're interested in this guys, uh, Knife Hog is offering it for $31.99 and if, this, if that is your first time purchasing from Knife Hog, they offer 5% off your order if it is your first order with them. And they also offer free shipping on all orders. You don't have to order over a certain amount to get that free shipping. Free shipping on all orders. So that is an excellent deal right off the bat. So if you're interested in this knife, I'll post a link in the description to where you can buy it from Knife Hog. And if you have any questions on this blade, guys, just let me know. I hope you enjoyed the review. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, stay sharp, and God bless. Sherman 614. Peace. Knife Hog.